wouldn't know it at first glance, but a city in the south of Brazil has been a world leader for the past three decades. Curitiba has a population of around 3 million people. In a recent survey, 99% of Curitibans said they were happy with their city. Curitiba is a city in a developing country which has created a better environment and quality of life than in much of the first world. And it all started with one man and a simple idea prioritizing people over cars. Jamie Lerner was an inspired student of architecture and town planning when he became mayor in the early 70s. When he took office, he was confronted with a plan to demolish old buildings and widen the main city street to cope with increased traffic. I used to say that the cars are like our mother in law. We have to have good relationship with our mothers in law. But we cannot leave. They'll conduct our lives. In what was then an unpopular move, Lerner did the opposite of what had been suggested, paving the street and closing it to traffic, creating Brazil's first pedestrian mall. Rua das Flores, or Street of Flowers, has since spread to span 15 city blocks. A city is like a family portrait. You'll never destroy a family portrait. Even if you don't like the nose of one uncle or an aunt's belly, you don't destroy this family portrait because this portrait is you. Since 1971, Jamie Lerner has been city mayor and governor of the state for a total of 22 years and is now a legend here. Lerner retired from office in 2002. He's a big man with big ideas and used this city to realize his dreams, proving himself more philosopher than politician. I would say there are three main issues that they are becoming important for the future of the society. One is mobility. The second is sustainability. And the third is identity. If every city could take care of these three main issues, we could have more hope in humankind. By the 1970s, the population of Curitiba had grown nearly tenfold in 50 years and was clogged with cars. Lerner knew the solution was in public transport, but how to make it work in a cash-poor city. If I could tell, uh, what is the secret of Curitiba? One is it's a kind of commitment with simplicity. We didn't have fear of simplicity. Because a city is not so complex that the complexity sellers want us to understand. 
So Lerner created main arterial traffic paths, each with three roads, one leading into the city, one out, and a central road with two-way traffic and dedicated bus-only lanes to speed passengers in and out of the centre. We start with 25,000 passengers a day. Now we're transporting more than 2 million passengers. And it's one of the few systems in the world which is not subsidized. It pays by itself. Lerner introduced triple articulated buses to carry more passengers. We can transport in this simple system more passengers than in a subway. The cost, 100 times or 200 times less expensive than a subway. And we can do it, we can implement the system in less than two years. Ponderação e eficiência. Ah, obrigado. Olha, é, é, é bom ouvir isso. Thinking about his buses one day, Lerner realized they were slowed by boarding time, with people buying tickets on the bus. He came up with a design which was the final touch to his revolutionary bus system, the glass boarding tubes. I remember when I designed the first time the boarding tube in a serviette, in a napkin, in a plane. And when I saw it, and it works, it's a dream. Now during peak hour, buses arrive every 60 seconds, and they're always full. Another crucial design element for Curitiba is its extensive network of parks. Lerner hired Hitoshi Nakamura 35 years ago as director of gardens. Nakamura later became the state secretary for the environment. Together they created an enormous network of parks that now ring the city. I think this city uh, is one of the responsibles of the changes. And uh, in his energy, his enthusiasm, he, he touched all of us. But most of all, he, he proved that you can build a park in two months. This is one of the parks Nakamura built. By turning previously unusable land into parks, he not only made the city a leisure paradise, but also increased the value of surrounding land. And like nearly everything in Curitiba, this park serves more than one purpose. In the 70s, this area would regularly flood, so the plan was to enclose the river in a concrete canal. So que essa obra sai caro por aqui no mundo inteiro está fazendo isso e 100 metros de extensão dessa obra galeria né é, custava uma escola Instead Nakamura's solution was to let the river run and flood into surrounding parkland Baragui Park runs along the river and spans an area of 1.4 million square meters. Tudo natural, né? E não tem uh, o feito. E biologicamente tá certo porque sempre tem peixe, sempre tem. Né? Curitiba now has four times the recommended amount of green space per inhabitant. But with all that grass to mow, Nakamura had to come up with a sustainable and novel solution. 
Basta me um segundo, sem porta fora, quando o criminal acordar a senhora. É para parar a grama do parque, manter o parque limpo. É porque ó, pela manutenção seria mais barato você manter as ovelhas, né? In 1989, Laudolino got rid of his lawnmower and became an inner city shepherd. Aí o primeiro era maravilhoso, né? Seria bom esse emprego aí porque e também eu me dou bem com as ovelhas, né? But the parks and their sheep can't do much for the major problem confronting all Brazilian cities, including Curitiba. Filthy slums filled with desperately poor people. I wouldn't say the city is a paradise. We have all the problems uh, that any big city has. But I think in this city, there is a, one thing that makes a difference, is the respect given to people. When, I, when I'm speaking about solidarity, it's not a question of rhetoric. You have to feel inside of the daily problems of each citizen. So for the poor, Lerner came up with what he calls an equation of co-responsibility. He told the people in the slums to clean the areas where they live, and in turn the government would give them food for the rubbish they collect. Along with selling recyclables, this is how Andrea and her family survive. Cada cinco quilos de material que a gente leva, a gente recebe um quilo de verdura. Sempre ajuda na alimentação da gente, né? Às vezes não tem uma mistura, então a gente já coloca verdura junto. Verdura e fruta, né? Vem os, os dois juntos. But there's not much that can be done to improve living conditions in this slum. These houses were built illegally on a wetland because the people had nowhere else to go. E a gente já passou várias enchentes aqui. Já passei várias enchentes. Ninguém ficou na minha pele para saber o que eu passei aqui. Já pensou a gente ficar sozinha aqui nesse lugar? Não é fácil. Rosie Claire lives here with her daughter. Soon the government will demolish all the houses here to reclaim the wetland. But the residents won't be left behind. They're being moved to a new suburb, with roads, electricity and running water. E daí é lá vai ser bom, por causa que é lá, é um lugar bonito, plano, lá. Tem escola lá mesmo, lá dentro. Tem, daí tem mercadinho assim, lá é facinho assim. This is San Barqui, where Rosie Claire will soon be living. She was given a low interest mortgage to pay for her house and land. These houses are tailored to each person's needs and are designed free by city architects. The residents are trained in new skills and make up a large part of the labor force. Having retired from politics, Jamie is now enjoying life a little. But he hasn't abandoned his vision. He's now a consultant, advising many cities in the first world on a sustainable future. I think there's a lot of cities, they have incredible potential. The people, they don't, they don't trust it's possible to do it. If they don't have a general view about their cities, they won't have a general view about people. So if you want to make life better for people, make the cities better for people.